cut off my family after they missed out on my graduation because of golden child sister, but then they reached out to me when my dad was dying and his last wish was to support my jobless sister. Hi, so 10 days ago, my family got in touch with me after 10 years of not speaking to me. I am 31F and at the age of 21, soon after I graduated from college, I decided to cut ties with my family and move away from them. The reason why was the way that they treated me, in comparison to my sister. I have a twin sister, let's call her Rebecca. She is 12 minutes older than me and for some reason, my family has always treated her way better than they have treated me. She is pretty much the golden child of the family and has always been that way. I don't know why, but my family has always preferred her over me, even though I have achieved more than she has. I have always been the better student, better at sports, and even better at things that she calls herself the expert in, like art. You name it, I'm better than her at it and the reason for that is because I was always trying to outdo her as a child, hoping that maybe that would make my parents like me better. If anything, it just made them like me less because, to them, it probably seemed like I was trying to do it on purpose to put my sister down. It was not like that, honestly. I just wanted them to give me the same kind of love and affection that I saw Rebecca receiving, but never me. They always supported her and enrolled her in whatever classes that she wanted to go to, bought her whatever she wanted and she just had my parents wrapped around her finger all her life. For me, it was completely different. Every time I asked for something, I would be told not to act, entitled and spoiled, and even when it came to college, she said that she wanted to take a year, which turned into three years. She never ended up going to college, so she doesn't even have a degree. I, on the other hand, got accepted into a reputable business school because I had pretty good grades and I needed money from my parents to cover my college tuition, but they told me that I would have to take out a student loan and pay it all off myself in the future because they did not think that they needed to sponsor me even after I had turned 18. I thought that was really hurtful but I needed them to help me out with the loan, so I did not say anything then, I had accepted the fact that they were never going to love me as much as they loved Rebecca, so had just accepted my fate. I didn't really keep in touch with them while I was in college and just came back home from the holidays occasionally. Even then, I would not talk to them much because, after high school, I had pretty much distanced myself from my parents emotionally so that I wouldn't keep getting hurt over and over again. When I was about to graduate, I had invited them to attend a ceremony, but I never got a response from them. I tried everything, I tried to call them, I sent them new emails, and I even thought about visiting them, but by then, I had already tried calling them and messaging them, but they had not responded to any of that. So I figured that they just did not want to attend. It was not until after the ceremony that I found out from a couple of relatives that they were not able to attend because my graduation ceremony was on the same day as my sister's first day of art school. And of course, her first day at 21 was far more important than my graduation ceremony, so they could not let her be alone that day. It was crazy because she wasn't even going to any reputable institution, she was taking art classes in the nearby community college, which was literally just half an hour away from our house. I think that's the day that I pretty much realized that my existence did not make a difference to them and they would rather I don't contact them again. The message was loud and clear, it always had been, but that was the day that I decided that I did not need to pretend like I had a family, just to console myself. In fact, not having a family was probably better than having one like this. So I just stopped speaking to my parents, blocked them everywhere and I was done with it. I did the same for my sister because Rebecca and I also never shared a good relationship. Because of the love and affection that she received from my parents, she always assumed that she was better than me, even though I had a lot of evidence to prove otherwise. I was better than her in every aspect, I think she knew it, which is why she was so insecure of me and always tried to put me down. Well, the joke on her because now, I am in a far better place than she is in her life. She was always pretty arrogant and smug about everything, so we never really got along, and I did not regret blocking her and cutting them all out of my life. After that, I didn't really have any financial support, and I also had to worry about paying off my student debts, so I took up the first job opportunity that came my way, and since then, I have been working to prove myself and let everybody know that I'm good enough on my own and I don't need my parents to survive. Things were difficult at first, but I had a lot of good friends from college and from school, overall always there for me and had my back and now, I am in a really good position financially and mentally as well. For the past 5 years, I have been working in a vegan products company and recently, I have been considering starting my own business. I have been really into the whole vegan lifestyle and have been studying it in depth for the past couple of years, even though I am not vegan myself. And I think it's a huge market to be tapped into, so I have been considering starting something of my own for the past few months, and have spoken to a couple of people, who were willing to join me in my venture. So the plan was to start working on my business model and plan everything out in the next few months and then, I would quit my job once I had a couple of investors on board and start my own business. But then, last week, I received news from my family that my father was on his deathbed and I had to come meet him. It has been 10 years since I have spoken to anybody from my family, and I was really surprised that they were reaching out to me, but when I learned that my father had been battling with cancer for the last 3 years, I did not think of anything and I dropped everything to go back home. It was already too late though, since he was in a really bad condition and there was no going back. 
So, probably in the last ditch effort to make things right with me or maybe just to talk about my sister, they had invited me to visit him one last time. When I saw him, I almost broke down in the hospital because I had never seen my dad like that and my mother hugged me and it was just really painful. To be honest, for a while, I had forgotten everything from the past, and I was just worried about my father, and whether he was going to be able to make it or not. Rebecca was also there, but I did not speak to her because she did not put in any effort to talk to me. She had just made a face and was sitting in the corner. The entire time that I was there, my mom spoke to me and told her my father, but she was the only person who pretended like I was not even there and I found that really annoying so I did not speak to her. Anyway, I really really don't like her and I have no interest in what she's up to so I thought that it was completely fine for us to speak to each other and nobody else in the family seemed to mind our behavior either because they knew the kind of relationship that I had with these people. This was just one week ago and, two days after my father, passed away. Everybody already knew that he was not going to make it, so my mother and my sister had already made the arrangements for the funeral and it did not take too much time to wrap everything up. So I was able to come back home, but unfortunately, I had been made to agree to something that I really did not want to, do before my father passed away. On the second day of my visit, Rebecca had gone home because she was really exhausted, at one point. So it was just my parents and I in the hospital room and then, they started talking to me about my work. I thought that it was really innocent, and I did not think much of it because my father was literally on his deathbed, I did not think that they could be up to something nefarious at that moment. So I told them that I had been working at a really successful company for the past two years and I was doing well. They heard me out for a bit and congratulated me, but then they started telling me about how badly Rebecca was. They said that she had dropped out of community college the first couple of months and bothered to go back. She did not have a degree and her grades had not been that great when she was in school either, so she couldn't exactly explain the gap and she didn't even go to any college so she did not do anything until she was 25. And then, my parents started pressuring her to get a job, so she finally did but she was never able to last longer than 3 to 4 months. She would come back home after a couple of months, and tell our parents that she had quit the job because it was just too much and they would not pay her enough, it didn't even make sense because they were paying her exactly the right amount. She was working low paying jobs because she did not have a degree, and she was not even willing to put in the time and effort to work hard and move up the ladder. None of it made sense, and they had been trying really hard to explain to her that her arguments would not hold in the real world and so they had been fighting a lot with Rebecca and trying to make her independent, but she didn't seem to care about the future at all. She was just not serious about anything and was taking everything very casually. Whenever my parents tried to speak to her about it, she would just blow them off, and recently, she quit her last job six months ago and was just sitting at home with nothing to do. They told me that they were really worried about her and they wanted me to be the one to look out for her because after my father was gone, my mother was too old and she would have to think about her own retirement as well since she was just one year away from retiring, and she just couldn't bring herself to constantly keep her working to support her daughter, who should be able to support herself by now, anymore. Honestly, I had no idea how to respond to any of what they were saying because my dad was suffering and I did not want to be the one to break the heart after so long. Because we had gone 10 years without having any contact with each other and at that moment, I was having really mixed emotions. I tried to tell my parents that I was planning on starting a business of my own. This was really not the right time for me to take on such a responsibility because I knew that Rebecca was a liability and she did not have any interest in making money of her own, she was totally comfortable with living off of other people's money and that's what she had been doing so far. The only difference was that before this, it had been my parents taking care of her, mostly my father because he made more money than my mother. But now, my father was passing the baton to me and telling me that I had to look out for my sister. I could understand why he wanted me to take up the responsibility, but I tried to tell them that it would not be possible for me at the time, since I was planning on quitting my job and starting something of my own, so all my money would go into that. But my dad told me that they had already spent a lot of money on healthcare for him and his medical expenditure, and even after this, he wanted my mother to be comfortable, and that was his priority, he knew that I would be there to look out for Rebecca. Which is why, he was counting on me, and he kind of forced and manipulated me into agreeing to take care of Rebecca's future. He made me promise that I would put my business plans on hold until Rebecca was at least a little financially stable, and I was made to promise that I would look out for her and have her back until then, I did not even know how long that would take, but I still said yes, because I did not feel comfortable, saying no to a man who was on his deathbed. No matter what he had done to me in the past, I was just not comfortable with it. I guess that was really stupid of me, but I don't think anybody else in my position would have been able to react a different way and if somebody had been able to stand up to their parents in that position, well, I have to say that they might be really strong but I am not that way and I just ended up agreeing to it. I was not happy about it, but I had to do it because as it appeared, my father was going to pass away soon, and I could not say no to his dying wish. They also told me exactly what it involved, since Rebecca was actually in a relationship with a guy from school and was planning to visit him since he was working in another city but in the same state, I really couldn't figure out why they couldn't visit each other more often because it's not Rebecca, at least Jared had a job and he could come to visit her. But they were doing the long distance thing. 
So as it happens, I know this guy that she was dating and I know the kind of person that he is, so I instantly knew that it was not good for her to be involved with him. That night itself, my parents told me that Rebecca had been talking to this guy for the past two years and it had mostly been online, but he had come back here to visit for a couple of weeks during the holidays and that's the only time that they got together. This man, let's call him Jared, let's just say he doesn't have the strongest values when it comes to women. In school, he was notorious for flirting with every girl that he could talk to, and he had been busted for cheating several times by his high school girlfriends. I did not keep track of him after we graduated, but I did hear from a couple of common friends from high school that he had already been divorced once and that was also for infidelity. I don't know what his problem was, but I knew that this was not a guy that I would trust, personally. I tried to explain this to my parents as well, but they told me that Rebecca seemed to really like him and they had seen them together during his visits back home, and they believed that they were meant to be together because they looked absolutely perfect and really in love. I already had a bad feeling about this because they were doing the long distance thing and it just meant that it opened up all sorts of avenues for him to cheat without worrying about being caught since he was in another city altogether. And Rebecca was clueless about this. My parents told me that they wanted me to pay for her flight tickets to go see him in the next couple of weeks because they knew that she would be pretty weak and only after our father passed on, and they wanted her to have somebody since my mother would be too busy with the legal formalities after my father's death and I would obviously have to go back to my work. So she would need somebody by her side and they wanted it to be her boyfriend. I tried my best to tell them about the kind of guy that was and warned them of the consequences of this. They were convinced that Rebecca and Jared were going to get married in the future and kept telling me that I had had to take care of these things after my father was gone and I would have to bear the expense of the wedding in the future as well. They were pretty convinced that Jared was the perfect guy for Rebecca and I really couldn't talk any sense into them, so I just agreed to it as well because it seemed pretty pointless to try and convince them that he was not the right guy. After my father passed away, I pulled Rebecca aside at the funeral and I told her that I knew about Jared, and then, I tried to warn her of the consequences. I had known Jared and his Casanova behavior for a really long time and I did not think that it was good that she was involved with him. But just like my parents, she also shook off my warning and told me that he had changed and she knew it. She told me that they were in love, and she knew that he would never cheat on her or do anything to hurt her, so she was not too worried about my warnings. She thanked me for being concerned for her but then told me that she would just appreciate the financial help and that I did not have to actually be her parent and try to have any sort of emotional bond with her, it was simply not required. That was kind of mean and hurtful, and that day, after that conversation, I decided that I was going to do exactly as she said. My father had only told me to look out for her financially, he hadn't said anything about the emotional factor. So in a way, she was right about what she said, and I decided that I was going to keep myself emotionally distanced from my family because I had better things to do, and focus on my work. After the funeral, I came back here and it has been a week since then. Two days after the funeral, my mother told me to book flight tickets for Rebecca to go see Jared and I did what she asked me to. I did not bother to check up on anybody after that because I got busy with my work. However, yesterday, I had an unexpected visitor show up at my doorstep. It was actually Rebecca, who had taken the bus from Jared's city to mine since she had been too embarrassed to call me, but she did not want to go home either. She could afford bus tickets, so that's how she came here, after traveling for 10 hours. When she showed up, she was exhausted and in tears. As I opened the door to her, I was really confused about what was going on and the second that I opened the door, she started crying immediately and told me that I had been right about everything. She told me that she had been planning to surprise Jared, so when she showed up at his place, it had been quite unexpected, and he had actually been spending time with another girl at his house when she showed up. When she saw that, she confronted him about it immediately and asked her who that was, and he told her to mind her own business. He then said that they were not exclusive and he was free to do whatever he wanted when he was not at home with her, so she had no right to ask him about his life here. That obviously pissed her off because in her head, they had been together for two years and she was fully committed to him and was thinking about getting married to him. So that was pretty hurtful and they ended up getting into a really big fight in his hallway. And in a bit of anger, apparently, she decided to lift her duffel bag and hit him with it because she was that pissed off, and unfortunately, one of the chains on the bag caught him in the eyebrow, and he started bleeding profusely. She got really scared and made a run for it, got to the bus stop and took the first bus that she could find that led her here. And now, she wants my help. She told me that she was ready to learn how to be independent and fix her life, and I needed to be the one to do it for her because I had been independent for a really long time, almost 10 years now. So she thought that there would be nobody better to teach her the ropes in my line of work and give her a job. She told me that she knew I was about to start a business of my own and was hoping that maybe I would give her an opportunity to work there, not as an employee, but as a partner. It was just a lot to process for me, and before I could agree to anything, I decided to ask her if she knew whether Jared had decided to press charges against her or not because if he had, I did not want anything to do with her. Because what she had done was wrong, no matter what Jared was doing. She had no right to get physically violent with him, and that was grounds for pressing charges against her, even if she had managed to run away from the scene. He could still just as easily find her out and she could be arrested for it. 
In that case, I did not want anything to do with her because I was not going to be the one to clean up her mess anymore. When I asked her about it, that's when the truth came out, and she told me that she hadn't actually managed to escape, he had pressed charges against her and she had to pay a huge fine as compensation for what she did as well, which is why she was here. I told her there was no way I was going to help her out and told her to go back home because I did not want to get involved in any of this. She got very upset when I said that and reminded me of the promise that I had made to my father before he passed away, but I told her that the promise didn't matter anymore because it was very obvious to me that she was an idiot and was never going to do the right thing. So I was not going to be there to clean up her mess after her, I just wanted to start my own business and I did not want her to join me because she was a total liability. I told her that the least that I could do for her was book her tickets to go back home, but after that, she was on her own and I was just going back to no contact with my family again because this was too much. It had been just one week and she had already screwed up colossally. None of this would have happened if she had just heeded my warning and stayed away from that guy, which chose not to do, even after what I said to her. So I was just really irritated by everything and I told her that I was going to book her the flight tickets, so she could just go to the airport and wait there instead because I did not want her to waste my time since I had a lot of work to catch up on. She couldn't argue with me because I was already booking the tickets, so she headed to the airport in a cab a few minutes later. I thought that that would be the end of it, but obviously, now my mother is pissed off about what I did. She believes that I should have been kinder to my sister, and should have taken her on as a partner in the business since she wanted to clean up her life and get her act together. This was my opportunity to be helpful, and I declined it because I was too selfish to do so. Or at least that's what my mother believes, I don't think that I was selfish at all. In fact, I think it was pretty helpful because I booked her the flight tickets to go back home. Obviously, now she has to figure out a way to pay the fine to Jared but that's hardly my business anymore since she was the one who chose to hit him and visit him in spite of my warning. My mother is really pissed at me and constantly calling me and messaging me, to remind me of the promise that I had made to my father and telling me that I'm not living up to it the way she had expected me to. So Ida for refusing to clean up the mess that my sister has made in spite of a promise that I had made to my father on his deathbed? Update 1, hi, so it has been 3 days since my sister visited me and I turned her away. My mother had been trying to contact me for a while, but I decided to block her because it was really getting on my nerves. I don't owe it to anybody to help them. Yes, I had made a promise to my father, but honestly, I have been manipulated and coerced into making that promise. It was not something that I really wanted to do, I think I had made that sufficiently clear. And even most of the comments said that it was really manipulative of my parents to contact me only when my father was on his deathbed and even then, it was pretty clear that they just wanted me to come visit them so they would have some surety that I would help Rebecca out later on, after my father was gone. As he was going away, he still manipulated me into doing something for the golden child of the family. It's really unbelievable, they only ever cared about her and about me. No matter what kind of relationship that we shared, he was still my dad. And it hurt to watch him die, but I don't know how to feel about it anymore. I don't really miss him, since I never had a good relationship with any of them, and for the past 10 years, I haven't been in touch with them. But I do feel kind of let down and disappointed. It was my mistake, for believing that things could change between all of us. Or that my family could ever bring themselves to care about anything other than my sister. I guess not, that's never going to happen. Anyway, I can care about a lot more things that have nothing to do with my sister and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on starting my own business now, no matter what. Nobody's gonna stop me. I already lost focus once and it was not good for me, I'm not gonna let it happen again. Update 2, Hi, so Rebecca reached out to me today. I guess I had forgotten to block her. She sent me a text saying that she had managed to pay off the fine and she did not need my help anymore. She also told me that my mother was really disappointed, and she never wanted to see me again. I guess that's fine by me, I did not want to see them again either. They only wanted me for my money, not for who I was as a person, and they were never going to regret how they treated me all my life. And I knew that. So after reading that message, I did not even bother to reply, and I just blocked her. I was done with this. Update 3, Hey! So it has been a couple of months and I just wanted to give you guys a little update on how my business venture is going. The business model is almost complete and so far, every investor that I have spoken to, has expressed a lot of interest in my business, I think I'm gonna quit my job and put in my resignation in a couple of days because I'm finally ready for the next chapter. I am once again no contact with my family and things have never been better for me. Honestly, I think going no contact with them once again was the best decision that I could have made. And this business, this is going to be my new family now.